All right, a big update we're working on here at Brilliant Directories is having elevator waiting music before the webinar begins. So we'll be sure to notify you once that update is ready for the webinars. Well, it's been a great two weeks. We've been super busy here at BD. The Facebook group has been popping off, so it's great to see all the activity there. If this is your first time joining Webinar Wednesday, welcome. I am Jason there on the left, and we are lucky to be joined by David Rockland, the digital strategist here at Brilliant Directors, and so much more. Can't say that enough. David, thanks for taking the time to join us for this webinar. Glad to be back with everybody for a great webinar Wednesday. Uh, we've got a really interesting presentation coming up for you. One that we've covered a little bit in the past, well over a couple of years ago now. So we're revisiting it with uh, some great new ideas and tools to share with you guys. And we are streaming on YouTube today, which means that the replay will be instantly available on our YouTube channel. We will also share a link in the Facebook group. So if you needed to catch something uh, that we covered in today's webinar right away, that YouTube link will be available in the Facebook group. And speaking of the Facebook group, if you're not already a member, please feel free to join us at brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook. I believe uh, this week we'll be surpassing 7,000 active members in that group. So it's really great to see all the activity there, everyone helping each other. Uh, I'm in there as well. Uh, really great conversations, really constructive and positive uh, conversations happening there. So definitely invite everyone to join us there at brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook. And I do see some new names and faces out there. So welcome if this is your first time joining us a little bit about Webinar Wednesday. Uh, it's really a great channel for us to share some of the new features built into the platform. What we like to focus on more specifically are some of the features that can help you grow your community a bit quicker. Uh, some of these are uh, topics that we'll cover uh, can be on increasing website traffic, converting that traffic into members or subscribers to your community. Uh, one of my favorites is improving the navigation, how to create good landing pages, how to make things smooth and easy for the potential visitor or member visiting your site. So if you have questions on these topics or anything else about your membership website, Site. We'll try to get to as many questions as possible today. All right, and we have uh, a small handful of BD Lab updates to share. I'll sh uh, stream through these uh, relatively uh, quickly. We've broken ground on lazy loading images. So this is uh, helping uh, the Google PageSpeed scores and other tools when they visit your site, the images that are not on the screen in front of the user, they won't bother loading them, which takes up resources, which can help tick the needle on some of those page speed scores. So it's not the final update for this, but it's a huge step that we broke ground and we figured out how we want uh, to tackle the lazy loading images update. Uh, we've started with the homepage streaming section. So if you're streaming blog articles or events or members on your homepage, uh, the images in those sections will be lazy loaded on the page, which should help uh, speed up some of the load times there on the homepage. After that, we'll be looking at more internal pages, such as the search results pages for members and posts, and some other areas where images are loaded default by the system. So we'll be sure to keep you guys posted as more updates uh, for speed and lazy loading images are pushed. This is a big one. It's been an upcoming uh, release. It's now available. When you're creating a support ticket in your admin dashboard, you can now include attachments and images when submitting a support ticket. Prior to this, when you created a support ticket in the admin area, uh, you could only include plain text. Uh, let me show you an example of where this is. Uh, so if you head on over to uh, your dashboard, uh, under my account, uh, there are some links here, my websites, uh, my tickets. Let's click on create new ticket, in case you didn't know those were there. And when you're here, uh, you can create a new ticket and we'll just uh, choose a site here, uh, homepage, uh, images not loading, whatever the issue might be. And not only can you attach images here at the bottom here? You can just click and it'll access uh, your computer's desktop or whatever it might be. Um, now you can also make things bold, italic, underlined, um, as well as drop in some links here. So just a little bit more, I guess, richer 
text you can add here for your support tickets, as well as the ability to add screenshots. So when you're submitting a support ticket, providing the, a direct link to the page having an issue, um, any screenshots you could provide us. I know for some people it's sometimes difficult to take screenshots. Even if you snap it with your cell phone and email support at brilliantdirectories.com, even that is helpful. Our, our goal when a ticket is support is sent to us is to recreate the issue so we can identify the problem. So um, the more information you could provide us to help recreate the issue, the faster our team uh, can assist you. And we know that when support tickets come in, um, you guys are working hard on your websites. That's why um, you know, you're, you're emailing in. So we know you're working hard on your websites and we definitely wanna try to help you guys as quickly as possible. All right, so that uh, should provide better communication. Colette and some others, this one is for you. Now with the billing reminder emails, you can select the billing cycles you want to target when those reminder emails are sent to the member, to the customer. Let me show you uh, where that will be. And this is an add-on, the billing reminder emails. I think it's a tremendous add-on, especially the past due email reminders. Uh, so this would be under finance and we can go to payment settings. And under additional settings, uh, you'll have billing email settings. And what everyone should have now in this section, the email to the member is there is a drop down here and you can select the billing cycles who would receive these emails. So I know the main case here is for upcoming payment reminders. A lot of BD users didn't want their monthly members to receive these payment reminder emails, uh, but they did want their annual members uh, to receive these upcoming payment reminder emails. So in this case, all you would do is select annually and that is now activated. Make sure to save your changes uh, and it's done. And uh, the badge here tells you how many cycles have been uh, selected. Uh, for now, there's, there's five key cycles, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually annually and one time quarterly is every three months. Uh, that is one of the payment cycles available in the BD platform. Uh, so this is available now. You guys can head on over to there and make the uh, appropriate changes you need for your website. All right, and we've also, um, just like the lazy load example, uh, there were some other speed updates uh, that have been pushed. This is an ongoing thing within uh, the BD network. We're working on improving response times, finding things that we can uh, cache, and also optimizing some queries and a lot more things. So a lot of these are due to some of the support inquiries that come in. Uh, you know, people report, hey, this page is loading slow. So sometimes it's it's on the user, they've put some heavy assets on a, on a specific page, uh, but sometimes uh, we do identify things in the system that can be improved. So we definitely appreciate when you guys ping us and notify of those of those things. All right, some cool stuff coming soon. The first Zapier integration, I got a sneak peek of this today with the dev team. Shout out to Stuart uh, from the dev team working on this. I'm actually gonna show you a demo of how this phase one works. The reason there's a phase one is you can create different cases and Zap events to work with Zapier. So the first one, the low hanging fruit so we can get something out there is uh, when you create a form, an application form, a survey form, or just your regular contact us form or your newsletter form, you can send that contact form data into Zapier and have it do or connect with 4,000 other uh, different solutions out there. So let's take a look at what this is going to look like. Uh, this isn't the tip of the week, so I'll kind of breeze through this uh, a bit quicker than I normally would, but I do wanna show you guys a sneak peek of how this is going uh, to look. So let me get to where I need to go. Okay, so uh, this is a contact form on a site. It could be the newsletter sign-up form. It could be a custom survey you've created. And yeah, when this form is filled out, it's saved in the forms inquiry section, excuse me, forms inbox of your dashboard, which is nice. Uh, but sometimes you wanna send this data uh, somewhere else. And that's where Zapier comes in. It's basically, thousands of API integrations with one platform through Zapier. So when you have a form like this, in this case, you'll be able to connect it to Zapier, and I'll go to Zapier in a second, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with it, but um, you would edit your form. It could be a custom form uh, that you have on your site, so website contact us form. And in the edit form settings uh, pop-up window, and this is, we're familiar with this, you can choose what happens after the form is submitted. 
uh, there will be a new tab called Zapier Settings. And um, all you need to do is enable the webhook and also copy the link that Zapier provides you. And that's basically all that you need to do. And we'll go to Zapier and see what happens here. But let me show you, um, before we go into Zapier, let me show you quickly one simple thing you can do with this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill out this contact form and I'm gonna have it update this Google Sheet. So this could be where all the, you know, the submissions get posted to uh, based on the Zapier uh, hook that we created. So uh, let's do, this is the webinar family here. And the email is webinar at family.com. Phone number is 1-800-WEBINAR. And this is a message from the webinar. All right, so the last record here says another test. So let's submit this form. Okay, that was sent. And here is the record here, webinar family webinarfamily.com, 1-800-WEBINAR. So this is just one example. You can send this information, you'll be able to send this information to your MailChimp, your Constant Contact, your HubSpot, Infusionsoft, any of the 4,000 solutions that Zapier connects with. So let's go to Zapier and see what we did exactly and, and some of the possibilities here. So you would need a Zapier account for this, but in my opinion, if you are working with multiple platforms in your in your business stack, you're using you know something for this, something for that. Uh, Zapier is is critical and essential um, in in some cases. So uh, we can go to Zaps here. This is the Zapier dashboard. All right, and this is the Zap that we created. So what you do is um, you tell Zapier that you want to create a webhook. That's it. Click continue. They give you this link. So you copy this link. That's what I had pasted in the form settings pop up here. And now this form is connected to Zapier. So now I follow the steps and I choose what I want the form to do. Uh, in this case, I've said add a record to a Google spreadsheet. So uh, what we've done is we want to connect with Google Sheets. We want to create a new spreadsheet row. You have to, you connect your uh, Google account here, and then you say what you want to do. So I created a spreadsheet called Webinar Demo Test. I'll, I'll go back here. The name of this spreadsheet is Webinar Demo Test. And I put the column headings. So the column headings are here, name, email, phone, message, comment, and then it asks you when that form is submitted, what data is gonna correspond to this uh, sheet here. Uh, so the name field is going to be the your name, the email is going to be the inquiry email, the phone number, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so that's all done. And what's cool is when that form is submitted, you can do other actions. Uh, what event do you want to do? Let's send um, a thank you email to the member using Gmail um, or, or send them to MailChimp or, you know, things like that. So this is really cool. I'm going to stop right there. But this is going to allow your BD site to tie into thousands of other solutions to trigger events to happen based on visitor and member actions and things like that. Those of you who are familiar with Zapier, I'm sure you're just as excited as I am about this. Those who are not, we will be doing webinars and showing you use cases for this, uh, again, to help you connect better uh, with your members and create a better uh, tech stack uh, using Zapier and other solutions. So definitely looking forward to that. All right, second one, uh, Ryan, this one is for you coming down the line, the ability to customize the checkout page URLs and also the membership signup URLs. I can also show you an example of this. It's coming down the pipeline soon. So uh, we are all familiar with the checkout links. Uh, right now you're kind of locked into your website forward slash checkout and then the ID of the membership plan which is all fine, it's been like that for over a decade. But we have been getting more requests that people want to customize both the, the number that corresponds to the membership plan, they wanna give it a custom name like uh, gold plan. And also some people don't like uh, or wanna change the word checkout that has to precede the, uh, the name of the membership plan. So you might want something like uh, register. So this is coming down the line. I can show you where these settings will be when this is released. Uh, but what this is going to allow you to do is have a URL like this, register general user. I'll refresh this page. 
and that's what I've done on this test site here. So you can get rid of the checkout, you can change it to something else, and you're not locked into having the membership plan ID as the final thing in the URL here. So uh, this is gonna be in a couple places. Uh, the first one, if you go to your advanced settings, um, if you search for uh, checkout URL, default checkout URL. So you can see I've changed it to uh, register. Let's change it to sign up for the moment. Okay, great. So that is where you're gonna change the main slug for that. And then you can further customize it based on uh, the membership plan if you want to change the name of the membership plan. So in this case, um, I have membership plan three. Right now it's forward slash three. And if you scroll down, it's not there yet, guys, it's coming soon. You will have a URL for the signup page and you'll be able to customize the last part of that. So again, this could be something like gold plan or something a little bit more catchy than the ID itself. So that is coming soon as well. We're making some small updates to the Google Translate add-on. Uh, we're trying to make the widget more portable. We hit a couple roadblocks with it, but that is coming down the line and some patching up some UI quirks with that as well. And then I mentioned uh, this in the previous webinar. I wanted to mention it again. Here's some year-end goals that we have. Uh, more use cases for Zapier integrations. Enhancing the features around the post commenting, like the ability to upvote and things like that. I don't have a specific date on that yet. However, I would say that that's going to be coming more at the beginning of 2022 or hopefully in December. So that's going to come at the tail end of this year. Newsletter reporting, be able to, being able to create smart lists after you send a newsletter of who opened or who clicked in an email. The ability to have coupon codes for one-off purchases, those are like leads, pay per post, and digital product purchases, being able to assign coupon codes to those types of purchases. Uh, more speed updates, and of course, lastly, uh, the top community suggestions that are pouring in from the Facebook group and in the support center. So thank you guys. I will uh, take some comments here. I'm gonna lower everyone's hands. If you have questions or a comment about any of these updates, uh, feel free to use the raise your hand feature. I'd like to hear uh, just a little bit about what you guys are thinking about all this stuff. All right, we got one hand up here. We got Tim. Hi, Jason. How's it um, going today? Great stuff, as always. Love it, love it. Um, hey, I was just wondering, in uh, in addition to the Zapier, um, is there any chance you'll be doing Connexit or Integrately or Webhooks integrations? Yeah, so Z Zapier or Zapier is, is like the gold standard right now used by most. We want to nail those integrations and use cases first. And then once that's running smoothly, our prediction is we'll be able to replicate the the, the Zapier connect, uh, hooks uh, for other platforms like Pabli or some of those other ones that you mentioned. So you mentioned a lot of solutions that are based on popularity. Um, you know, we'll, we'll work on getting hooks for the other connections because I would assume that they're working with the same models, the same way Zapier does. They just probably have a few different things that need to be connected. Um, so yeah, down the line, we may offer more types of those integrations beyond Zapier. Ah, very cool stuff, thank you. Thank you, good stuff there. Yeah, he did mention a, a handful of solutions out there. Z Zapier is the most popular, I'd say the gold standard uh, for this type of thing. So we wanna nail that and then we'll move on to other solutions. Uh, Lisa, your hand is up. How are you? Great. Thank you, Jason. Thanks for all that you guys are doing and it's constantly updating stuff. It's always getting better. Quick question about, I'm actually going to be moving to Thrivecart for my checkout and sign up so that I can do bump orders and different things like that. Do you guys have an integration with them or because you're doing Zapier, it, it can just go through there? Uh, let's, let's look, go to Zapier and see if they have a, a hook for, you said it's called Thrivecart. There's Thrivecart. Um, so what data would you send from your BD site into Thrivecart? Just out of curiosity, it's interesting to hear or vice versa. Yeah. So it would be the opposite way, right? So if I'm using it for the checkout page, then that way, if they want to buy a CD or something, when they sign up, for their practice, then they can do that. But then the data I'd like to send back to 
you, because you have the Zapier now, then I was wondering if we can set up a trigger to, once they sign up on Thrivecart, all the data from their um, checkout will go back into registering their membership. Absolutely. So that's a really good point that you just brought up. So right now, our, our focus is going to be to send BD data into Zapier. Uh, so like when a mem member review is submitted or a lead is submitted, the form is submitted, it can go into Zapier. Member signups on your BD site, they can go into Zapier. Once we complete those kind of like outgoing data, uh, the, the obvious, those outgoing events, yeah. Then what we're going to do is focus on importing events. So if you want to add a member from a, another source, like they're, when they're registering on Thrivecart, it adds it as a member registration on your BD site. Um, that's that's going to be the next phase with Zapier. So you got, that's probably going to be the phase two is the importing, where the phase one is going to be all the low-hanging fruit to send data out into Zapier. So um, okay. that will definitely be on the radar. And once we can import, um, we, we create the logic to import members then to me, I, I don't fully understand, but I would assume any place you're gathering member data, um, any form you're gathering member data from that has a Zapier integration could be zapped into your BD site as a member record. Uh, there would yeah. just be some minimum things that it needs to have an email, it needs to have a password and maybe a name or something at the minimum, and then it, it should work. So yeah, stay tuned for that stuff because that's that's going to be coming up next is importing data into your BD site using Zapier. Okay, great. All right, good question there. I'm glad to see Thrivecart is there. We'll soon have BD there after we get some of these workflows uh, set up. All right, so good stuff there. Lots of updates. You guys are keeping us super busy. Uh, I think this is one of the most exciting years for updates and pushes on the BD platform. So glad that you guys can all be a part of it. And with that, we will segue into the tip of the week. As always, David and I, uh, this one we came up with last week. We were thinking about the topics uh, that would be good for this week's webinar. And as David mentioned, we have covered this in a previous webinar, but there have been some radical changes, and we thought it would be great to do a small refresher on how to add custom content and SEO value to your member search results pages as well as your post search results pages. So if it's okay with you, David, I'd like to uh, pass over the mic. Absolutely. So like Jason mentioned, we previously covered this in a tip of the week. I believe it was close to two and a half years ago now. And in that one, we focused primarily on adding the SEO value to the search result pages. But We've released a lot of updates since then, especially with the web page builder. And so there's a lot more flexibility with what you can do when you're customizing specific search result pages. So we thought we'd dive into the different kinds of elements and content types that you can add to search result pages in addition to the SEO value that you can add to them as well. So uh, starting at ground zero here, uh, we figured we'd go over the basic layout of the default search result page. So in this screenshot, it's the member search result page. However, the layout for post search result pages, like for articles, discussions, events, is pretty much the same. So the primary elements are the page title or the heading right at the top. In this case, it's local business results. Below that, you have the search results listed out there. So in this case, this is a member search result page. If it was a post search result page, say for articles, we'd have the list of articles there. And then uh, typically you might have a sidebar on these search result pages uh, as well. And in sidebars, of course, you can edit the widgets that are within those sidebars. So you can add some custom content there, but that sidebar in this case would then be applied to all of the member search result pages, whether you're searching for members in LA or Dallas, or you're searching through uh, different member categories, that sidebar would be the same unless you go in and you customize one of those specific search result pages. So this is a great starting point, but what if we do want to add that custom content to specific search result pages? So what can actually be changed or added on search result pages? Uh, again, whether it's member search result pages or post search result pages, these same concepts apply. So the primary elements, of course, would be the main title and the subtitle. By default on search result pages, there's no hero section or hero splash section at the top of the page, kind of like what BD websites uh, on their homepage have by default, that hero section with the big image uh, and then some, you know, maybe a search box or a call to action there. 
or a title, uh, you can add that on search result pages as well. It's just not enabled by default. You can also have just general custom page content. Maybe you want to add additional details or context or information or calls to action on a specific search result page. You can do that. And there's also some different placement options for sections on that search result page where you can place the custom page content. You can also edit the SEO settings and the SEO meta tags. This goes into adding that specific additional SEO value to, uh, to these specific pages. However, if you are adding custom content or custom title, things like that, that would improve the SEO value of the specific page that you're editing as well. The sidebar as well, like I mentioned, you can include a, a different sidebar on a specific search result page. If you really want to spruce up your search result page for members in Los Angeles, you can add a custom sidebar to that page that's different than on the other member search result pages, or you can add some custom content in the header of that page, things like that. And then of course, you can also edit the additional advanced settings that are available in the web page builder. So we thought we'd give you some ideas here, some ways to use this custom content on specific search result pages. So you can add that additional SEO value for maybe your high value or your underperforming pages, you know, your high value pages or your top performing pages. Maybe you want to make those even better. You can add some custom content to those search result pages, or maybe you have some underperforming search result pages, ones that maybe you thought should be getting some more visibility that just don't seem to be. Maybe adding some custom content to those pages would improve their performance. Like I mentioned, you can also add some additional context or just some general uh, information to search result pages. You can also optimize the default page title with something more unique. You can also add some uh, additional details to a search result page with that hero section, which contains a, a really apparent, prominent background image above the search results. You can add you know, maybe a call to action in there, just a bigger title. Maybe you want to add some additional information within that section. You can do all of that. And then, of course, you can also increase engagement on these uh, specific search result pages by adding some additional calls to action in various places throughout the page. So there's a lot of different options. It's basically utilizing the web page builder and all the different tools that are included in that and applying them to specific search result pages, uh, which are obviously dynamic You know, for member search result pages. If new members join or members might leave, that's going to be reflected in the search results. But if you're making these changes, those search results will still be uh, correct and relevant. It'll just surrounding those search results, you'll see the, uh, the custom elements and the changes that you've made to the search results page. So there's a lot of flexibility here, a lot of cool things that you can do by customizing these search result pages. And so we thought we'd go in and uh, show you how to do some of these things, give you some ideas, and uh, hopefully these ideas might spark some different things that you can do uh, with your own website and, uh, and make things a little bit more unique and especially maybe improve the uh, general usability of your site from your specific user's perspective. Absolutely. And like one of the cool things of Brilliant Directories is like the site just builds itself. Um, as you add categories, the search result pages for those categories are automatically created. As members join, their profile pages are ad automatically created. So I guess uh, a, war a little bit of a warning. So your site's going to create lots of pages of content. So when you're going to customize a search results page, uh, it's, it might be a little daunting to go after every single search results page that was generated by the, the platform on your site. So you might want to focus your energy and maybe target a specific city and really build out the search results pages for that, for that city or that city plus a category like Los Angeles plumbers or, or you know, things like that. So uh, kind of pick your battles when you're going after this, but definitely this is something that I would recommend um, everyone do, especially on either uh, your popular pages, if you want to make sure that they hold their Google rankings, adding this custom content will help. Or if you have uh, some pages that are doing well, but you have some underperforming pages that need a little bit more unique content to give them that little bit more of an edge in the Google search results, uh, then this is something you should definitely take advantage of as well. So here's a good example. So here's a page of Los Angeles uh, search results. Uh, so I've done done what Dave, I'll show you how we did this, but um, instead of just, uh, you know, the member search results for Los Angeles, what I did is I added a hero section. 
Um, I updated the title, Los Angeles Business Directory. That's good for Google. I added a subheading, although the font size of the subheading is bigger. It is technically a subheading. Check out our top picks for Los Angeles businesses. Guess what? If I'm a Los Angeles business and you just said that these are your top picks, I want to know how to add my business because this is obviously a, a good list of businesses here. And you can see right under the title, I put a button, add your business. It doesn't have to be add your business. It could be a link to Los Angeles events and you link to the event section of your site for Los Angeles, lo the location of Los Angeles. So uh, you could do a lot of cool things here. And then what I've done is I've added, there's only one member on this demo site here, uh, but I've added a another tab here. And in this case, I just copy and pasted from from uh, Wikipedia just for this quick example, but um, I took some content about Los Angeles and I listed it here in the read more about Los Angeles section. Um, you can put more than paragraphs in text. You can use the content blocks and create links to Los Angeles events, Los Angeles coupons and deals, maybe some categories plus Los Angeles like doctors, plumbers, you know, lawyers, whatever it might be. So you can do a lot with this read more tab um, which can also enhance not only the user experience, but also add uh, some content to this, this page. So let's take a look at how we did this. Um, well, the first thing, the quickest thing is when you wanna create a custom page, um, there's two types. There's pages for your member results and there's everything else for your post search results, like your article search results, your event search results, your discussion search results. Um, so the quick thing that I did is I actually just clicked on the breadcrumb here for Los Angeles from this member. And I just copy this URL here, uh, United States, uh, California, Los Angeles. I could also just uh, take Los Angeles, all, all of these work, United States, California, Los Angeles, they're all valid links on your site. But in this case, let's just take the full one. And what you wanna do, and I'll start from the beginning, we'll slow it down a bit, go to the dashboard, and where we wanna go is the web page builder. And we'll click on new web page. And what you wanna do is paste the corresponding URL, whatever the search results might be. Uh, it could be Los Angeles plumbers in here as well, but you wanna come here and then you want to give it a nickname. So it'll be Los Angeles city page, we'll call it. And here is all you need to do under page type you want to select member search results now the system knows that this url is corresponding to a member search results page on your site and it's going to make sure that the member results still show on the page so when you do those two things it it makes it its own page now let me go to the page i created for this Scroll down here. I can actually just use the filter here. Okay, so Los Angeles. So I did create two pages. I created one page for forward slash Los Angeles and forward slash United States of America, California, Los Angeles. You can target them differently um, or you can redirect them to each other if you wanted to. Let's go to this one here. And we can see a few things here. The, the URL is here, forward slash California, Los Angeles. The page type is member search results page and this is that content that i copy and pasted from wikipedia in this case however you don't need just text and images uh, you could put in content blocks and link to some probably more useful things around your site also corresponding in this case to los angeles and we can see here I've updated the title for this specific page. It says Los Angeles Business Directory and check out our top picks for Los Angeles businesses. And then I've also enabled the hero section. We've covered this in previous webinars. So what I did is I got a picture of the Los Angeles skyline and I used it as the hero background image. And uh, there are some settings here, the main title font color, subtitle uh, color, I made them white, I made them nice and large. And here's the cool part, I think. In this case, I created a call to action in that hero section, and it takes you to checkout three, uh, which is, the, is a free listing for businesses. So it says add your business, uh, I chose the button color that I want, extra large, and open in a new tab. So this hero section is really powerful. And what's really cool, pro tip, Beyond the call to action and the, the title and subtitle, you can add additional hero section content here. This could be a widget shortcode, it could be plain text, it could be a form, 
Uh, you could really put whatever you want in this extra hero section content there. Uh, so let's go ahead and save these changes. And we'll view the page. It's the page we just saw. Uh, but we can see here, um, it definitely adds a lot more than just having uh, the Los Angeles search results page title here. And to touch on David's point about the sidebar under page options, you can decide to show a sidebar. So if you have a custom sidebar, maybe it's just for Los Angeles and you've put a banner ad in there that maybe highlights a member that wanted to be featured in, in your Los Angeles search results, you could create a sidebar, call it Los Angeles member search results sidebar uh, or whatever, and select it here. So you can have a custom sidebar selected for this specific page, which is really high value if you're going to, I think that's the best example is have custom banner ads or content you wanna show that correlates to this search results page. And of course you can choose if you want the sidebar left, right, slim or wide. And this is also what David was talking about, the placement of the custom content. So in this case, we have it inside of a tab, uh, but you could put this um, at the bottom of the page. So we'll go below member results and we'll save the changes. And this gives you a little bit of flexibility of where you want this extra SEO content, we'll call it, or calls to action uh, to display. So let me just duplicate this page. Uh, so now we can see that tab is not here, that more results tab. And if we scroll down, we can see here is the additional content under the, the search results. Again, we just have one member in this example here, but under the results, we now show all that extra content. So what a great way when people get to the bottom of the search results to get them to click to more areas of your site. Again, these, this could be maybe just related content for Los Angeles. Maybe you did a blog post on like top attractions in Los Angeles. So you can do some internal linking to that article here but this is also what i was talking about like sometimes this takes just a little bit of time and you guys have a lot of search results pages since the system auto generates them so you might want to pick and choose your battles on wh which cities or locations or categories you want to tackle first so you don't exhaust all your energy you know, and get overwhelmed with all the pages that you would need to uh, to target to have this custom content it is custom so custom does take a little bit of time to to give each one a nice little touch here but i love this hero here uh, with the button and yeah this is an example of a member search results page with custom content on it now let's take a look at david what did we do uh, post search results page we did the discussions one right so we actually did create this one out too we built it out for discussions let's do a search for discussions okay here it is um discussions so we have discussions on uh, this site. This could be blog articles, this could be events, this could be the classifieds. What we've done here is uh, we've added a more engaging title to this posts uh, search results page. And we do hear this a lot, like can we add quick links to like the most popular categories or to um, keyword searches? Um, you know, it's kind of like creating a tag cloud. Um, you can do that with this, with the content, the custom content on this page are these buttons here. So let's take a look behind the curtain and see how we turned a post search result page into its own, uh, I guess, uh, customizing it with its own content. Uh, so in this one, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to click on new web page and I'll come back to the one I made in just a moment. Um, so let's say we wanted to do one for our events search results page. So let's give it a nickname, events. And in this case, we don't need to enter the URL here. The system will know uh, which search results page to target based on these steps. For page type, you wanna select post search results. Or we can see the URL field goes away and says, and then the system is asking you, okay, which post do you wanna link to this search results page? And all the post types that you have on your site will be listed here. So in this case, we want to let's say events as an example, even cooler, you can not only have a custom page for the main event search results page, but maybe you wanted to do events, weddings, maybe one of your categories was weddings, right? Events, weddings, whatever, kid stuff. So you can actually have a splash page, the search custom search results page based on the category or just apply it to the main page 
Um, so in this case, let's do it for category one. And then you can do all that cool stuff like category one, or let's say it's wedding as an example, like everything weddings, find all the, the wedding stuff going on, uh, all the wedding events happening. Uh, so that is how you would link a post type. You just use the chain here and, and follow the steps. So let's go to the one I did for discussions. Use the filter here. And it gives you a little badge here so you know like, oh, this is a post search results page that was created in the web page builder. All right, so a few things we did. Uh, the title here, join us for awesome discussions, share your thoughts and ask questions. Great way to connect with prospective members and visitors. I'm gonna go to the hero section. I do love the hero section. So I did put an image of people chatting and discussing things uh, together. And then of course I, I made the font colors white because I'm using kind of like a darker uh, overlay color on the background. And in this case, I did not put a call to action in the hero section. However, if we go on over to the page content section, I created quick links. So if you want a quick link to category one or category two or category uh, three, uh, you know, I added a button here and let's say you wanted to quick link to a keyword. Let's go to discussions and search for learn. Okay, this is the URL for all discussions that have the keyword learn in it. So I'm gonna, I did a search for a popular keyword. Um, maybe you're a car site, so it might be Cadillacs you're searching in a, in a classified site or something. I'm just using a word that's part of these test posts here. So I'm gonna take this discussions learn and I just dragged a button link code from the uh, pre-made elements and we'll edit this and we'll link to learn and I'll just put Cadillacs here even though we know it's for the keyword learn but uh, all right Cadillacs um, so let's update that no nope, that's not how you spell it. there we go Cadillacs all right so and then what I did here is, is I put another button it says and I just use spaces to move it over here and it says start new discussion well, where this is linking to is the account dashboard for account discussions add. So if the member is logged in, it takes them directly to the page if they have the privilege of adding discussions. It could be adding events, it could be adding classifieds, but I've put a call to action here as the custom content and it's gonna take them right into their dashboard. If they're not logged in, it will take them to the login page and then there they can log in or register a new account. So either way, it should help improve uh, member signups or it should help encourage members to make more posts on uh, your site. Um, so that's all I used for the content section. I didn't put a bunch of paragraphs about Los Angeles here. I utilize this for button links. So just to keep, uh, keep that in mind uh, for you guys. And we can uh, reduce the spaces here. And then another thing is the page options. We put this above the member search results. So remember in the Los Angeles example, I switched it to below member results. So this is why these are showing above the member results. They could be below the results, just your preference, but I think this would be nice for uh, above the member results. And also let's make this bold. All right, and let's save the changes. Okay, great. So this went to the next line. So we just might want to take that into consideration. We might want to use a slim sidebar. Um, I know I went quick there, David. I know because we're a little short on time. Did I miss anything on this? I think you got it all. Ryan did ask a great question. We showed how to uh, make one of these pages for posts in addition to one of their categories. But what about for a location? Like say you want to uh, add some custom content specifically for the uh, Los Angeles events page. How would you go about doing that? Would the process be basically the same? Yeah, good one. Actually, I don't have the Google Maps on this site. We'll see, I'm getting the warning here, but let's go to our demo site real quick. And I'll just show you, Ryan, uh, the best way to do that. We just, the easiest way to get the link for something is to do a search. So in this case, we'll, we're on the events page of the uh, demo bootstrap site. So I'll just search for uh, Los Angeles and we'll just do a search. So this, it's a little long, but this is the URL 
that will take you to uh, the Los Angeles. Just take everything after the uh, forward slash. What this is doing is it's including the uh, the latitude, longitude, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, you can certainly get the URL like that. Uh, if you wanted to do a category plus location, go ahead and search the category as well. Category one Los Angeles events. You can do a search and then the same thing. Just copy that full URL and then paste it into the, uh, the URL section when you're editing that link. And that's how you would get, get that. Good question there. Okay, great. So just to recap real quick, for your post search results pages, I think these are, because these are a little more limited than, uh, than the member results, which can have tons of cities and states and regions and category combinations, the, the post types are probably a little more within reach, low hanging fruit to get these updated and customized a bit. There's only a few of them and probably only a few categories for each one. Uh, so here, just select page type, post search results, and then use the chain selects to select what the corresponding uh, post uh, page it will uh, apply to. All right, little deep dive there, but I think uh, everyone can add the hero section uh, to those pages. If you do just that, forget the additional content, just the hero section and maybe the call to action to add your business or to, to do something else, that'll keep uh, people clicking and it'll make your site look more developed. All right, let's, uh, let's move on over to the Q&A section. We could talk about the tip of the week, the updates, or we can answer questions about your own website. Uh, we do have some hands up here. Uh, we'll go with Ryan here since uh, David was just mentioning you. Hey, thanks. How are you guys doing this evening? Good, good, Ryan. How are you? Doing good. Yeah, maybe I didn't uh, add the question in there properly. I, I know how to grab the link. That's fine. Well, I guess I get the request a bunch. It comes. It does come up a lot where the only way you can do a, a page for a post is to have a, a category, right? Because it does the, uh, the post type and then the category. But if I was an events directory and I wanted to have LA events, I, I'd, I'd want like the LA hero header with a picture of LA and with the events list of just the events in LA, but there's no way to do that now. Cause I mean, we can change the URL or link to it, but you can't make a static page to, to make it look nice like you can for a category, for example. Gotcha. Are you not able to save that URL at all, Los Angeles events, in the web page? No, because for the, you can do that for uh, listings only. It does not allow that for posts. So that was my real question, because as soon as you turn it to post search results, that, mm -hmm. that URL goes away, because you base, you get, I don't know if you, if we were able to do that before, but um, the, when it was just the page struck strictly, gotcha. but now when you select the post search results, it gets rid of that URL, so I cannot edit that myself. Gotcha. Okay. So I see what we're, we're talking about. Pretty URLs for posts and their location and their categories. Is that correct? Right. Exactly. So, okay. I mean, I was just using the LA events as that's probably the best way. A post with something mm -hmm. not a category like a keyword or a uh, location where you want to be able to have a static page for a particular page, like a LA events page. Okay. Yeah. No, thank you for the suggestion. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it and see what we can do on our end for that. Cool. Thank you, Ryan. Ryan, I want to give a shout out. He was the fountainhead almost for the uh, the checkout page, uh, customizing the checkout page URL. So thank you for that, Ryan. All right, we got Robert. How are you doing, Robert? Hi, how are you? Tell us, Tell us all the good news. Yeah, um, I was trying to get, get it, head, make heads or tails of Zapier, and I wanted to ask you something here. Um, if you could go to my site, carrierboard.com, yeah, now so it's um it's I'm you know creating kind of a shipping thing like it's sort of, sort of like a, a uship.com if you're familiar with mm -hmm. them. Okay. Um and I set this up just for purposes for to to look at here in the in the demonstration and you see in the navigation where it says home and then it says loads, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you click on on post load. Yes. And, and you and want the, this to be submitted into your BD site? Yes, yes. I I know how to sub. I know how to connect the form. And if you, there's a table there, so if you go down and click on where it says test, like this table, right? Yeah. Um, the results. Right, right, right. Well, this looks like something that can be embedded on a on a site. But yes. So um, as I was mentioning to uh, Lisa earlier, I believe the next phase with so you're you're uh, gathering leads using jot form 
and we want to import that into your BD site or embed this data somewhere on your BD site. So the, the next goal, well, we're still in the very beginning stages, but eventually the end goal is you can also have third-party solutions where you have forms like JotForm, and that will zap the data into your BD site uh, so it could, in this case, be matched with a member as a lead, um, or it can be added to some data on your site that you can then render or display on uh, your BD site. So um, I, this is a, a perfect use case, Robert, of another solution where you, you, know, you happen to be using JotForm for these leads, and you want to zap this data into your BD site in some capacity. So we'll definitely keep you guys posted as we make uh, more progress, but this is another good use case uh, that we're in the direction that we're headed in. So thank you for that, Robert. All right, guys, good updates there. It's just about that time. Um, Dave, thanks for the tip of the week, how to add custom content to your search results page. If you guys just want to do the minimum, add a nice hero title to those to those search results pages. And Ryan, we'll check into the, I guess, the prettier URLs for some of those post types. Uh, tons of updates released, more to come. Really excited about that Zapier, Zapier, Zapier integration. We should be able to have that uh, phase one ready for the next webinar. Excited for that. And if we didn't get to uh, your questions today, I always encourage you to join our Facebook group. You can head on over to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook. We can continue the conversations there. And on behalf of myself, David, and the entire Brilliant Directories family, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Have a great day and a brilliant week. We'll see you guys in two weeks. Take care. Bye-bye.